Uh, hey everybody, uh, my name is Kevin. I work for a uh, outfit called uh, Twilio. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to use Twilio before, it lets you do cool stuff like uh, make and receive phone calls, uh, send and receive text or picture messages, and uh, enable VoIP calling in your desktop uh, browsers or mobile apps. And also, um, I actually wrote the node module for Twilio, um, and I think I'm actually going to add a high-level helper that is a one-liner so that Angelina Fabro brings you, uh, br brings you tacos, um, as you saw in the la one of the last talks. Uh, so that was, that was pretty awesome, uh, great use of Twilio. Um, and if you uh, think any of that stuff might be fun to play around with, uh, just go ahead and in npm install uh, Twilio. Um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, again, one of my favorite tools uh, for use with Node.js, which is Browserify. Um, and for me, it's actually sort of the key tool which unlocks the promise of Node to uh, allow you to share code between uh, the client and the server side. Um, and it's also uh, really useful even uh, beyond the browser. Uh, really what Browserify uh, allows you to do is to package up the Node.js module system um, and basically create a single JavaScript file that you can evaluate in any JavaScript environment uh, that lets you write your JavaScript in such a way where you can uh, you know, structure your code in as uh, Node.js style common JS modules. Um, so it's really cool. Um, if you haven't used it before, I definitely encourage you to do so because um, it allows you to uh, start to share culture, uh, if you will, with uh, both the client and the server side um, in your JavaScript code. Um, just having the same language on both ends of the wire uh, is pretty cool. Um, but if you actually want to reuse code, um, it should be written in the same style um, and kind of live in the same ecosystem uh, as, you know, as one another. So um, that's why I think Browserify uh, really enables a lot of the uh, really cool stuff that we sort of uh, are hoping to realize uh, with Node.js. So, uh, if you are writing a Node.js module uh, today that you're supporting um, out on NPM, uh, a lot of modules with Browserify today uh, will just work. So it could be that you have no work to do uh, to make your mod module Browserifiable, um, but you might want to do a little bit of extra work um, if your module meets uh, one of these two criteria. So if, uh, if the functionality that you're shipping in your module has sort of complementary APIs that you can, uh, that are slightly different, that you can use both on the client and the server side, uh, one example would be the uh, WS module, the WebSocket, uh, popular WebSocket uh, library for Node. Um, in the browser, uh, when you require it, it gives you a uh, cross-platform or a, you know, a browser-specific version of the WebSocket uh, implementation that exists on that browser. And, and then on the uh, server side, it gives you a, a WebSocket server that you can then uh, use. So if your module um, sort of ha could benefit from having sort of um, nice, uh, nice interfaces that are uh, that are connected on both the client and the server, uh, then you probably want, want to look at some of the more advanced uh, features of Browserify. Um, also, uh, sometimes your module isn't just going to work. So if your module does any kind of uh, a file system I.O. or something along those lines, um, obviously that's not going to work in Node, uh, or excuse me, with Browserify. Uh, but Browserify does provide shims for most of uh, Node's core libraries. So uh, a lot of the NPM universe uh, just kind of works today. So your module might be one of them. Um, if not, uh, I would definitely recommend you know, taking a look at how you can make it uh, Browserify compatible, uh, if, that, if that makes sense. Um, because a, a lot of folks are sort of moving to Browserify uh, as an alternative to some of the asynchronous module loaders uh, that are purely sort of live in the browser um, to, again, to, to realize that uh, promise of having the same style of code exist uh, both in Node and uh, client-side code. So, the, there's basically, uh, if you want to design a module to work with Browserify, there's about three things you uh, need to look at. So uh, the first thing is uh, sort of looking at the entry point for your module and saying, like, you know, if, if there is sort of a different interface that you want to expose on the client versus the server, uh, you can actually specify in your package.json a different uh, entry point where your module uh, begins. So we'll take a look at how you uh, do that. Uh, you also uh, define any shims that you need to uh, insert. So if uh, the HTTP implementation that ships with Browserify doesn't meet your needs, uh, there's a way that you can create your own uh, custom uh, browsers, uh, browser shim uh, for a node module that you use um, in your application. And we'll take a look at how to do that. 
Uh, we also have uh, source uh, transformations that are available um, in Browserify. So uh, if your module is written in CoffeeScript and you need uh, a CoffeeScript compile before uh, your module is ready for use in Browserify, uh, you can specify that package.json as well. Uh, so at this point, I wanted to actually write some code to show you uh, how that would work. So um, basically here, I have uh, two files, a browser.js and a server.js. And I'm going to create a node module that's going to work um, in both of those uh, environments, the server being just a plain vanilla uh, node program, and then the browser.js being a file that I'm going to package up with Browserify uh, to ship and include as a script tag, I uh, in a script tag potentially um, in a web browser. So uh, let's create a new directory. I'll call that uh, demo module. And we'll go in there and do an npm init. And we'll just accept a lot of these default values. OK, so now we have a package.json uh, for our program. And by default, when you create a new uh, npm package, uh, there's this main uh, main attribute here, which, uh, which sort of uh, specifies the entry point uh, for your module. So, uh, if, so when Browserify packages up your module, uh, by default, it's going to look at this main attribute first, and that's gonna, it's going to use that um, as the entry point for your module, um, because it uh, observes the same uh, module loading algorithms that, uh, that Node and NPM use. So uh, if you don't have a different uh, interface from browser to server, then that's fine, and you can uh, leave that uh, just as it is. Uh, so let's create. Uh, index.js, and uh, we'll open that up in a text editor here. Uh, not that one. We're looking for this one. Okay, great. So uh, here's our demo module uh, directory, and inside here uh, we'll just create um, something like say hi and say console.log server or something along those lines. Okay, so here's my uh, version of the module that works in Node. Um, and now if I want to have a browser-specific uh, version of my module, um, I'll create another file. I'll call it uh, uh, client.js. And uh, in this one, I'm going to have a, the same interface, uh, say hi, give that a function, and alert, hello, something along those lines. OK, so uh, on the in the browser, I want to use this as the entry point for my module. So the way that I specify that um, in package.json um, is by providing a, uh, another attribute uh, called browser. So uh, when Browserify uh, processes your module, it's going to look for uh, this attribute in your package.json. If you set it to a string, um, it's basically going to be a relative path to a uh, file in your directory uh, that is, you're, you want to use as the entry point. So I can just specify. Uh, client, excuse me, dot slash uh, client.js. So uh, now I have a module that I can use um, in this code here. If I go up uh, directory server.js, um, well, I don't actually have to go through and type all of that. I think you guys are kind of uh, with me there. So uh, basically, here are my two uh, entry points for uh, client and server. Um, now, the other thing that you might have to do besides sort of specifying a new uh, entry point there. Uh, is is provide some kind of or, or provide some other shims uh, for other functionality or other files that you want to override uh, when you're writing a module that's going to run in the browser. So the way that we do that um, in package.json is rather than uh, setting this browser uh, property to a string, um, I can actually uh, set this to be an object. So um, I still want to have a different entry point uh, for my uh, browserified package. Um, but in this case, I'm not going to sort of override main. Uh, over on, in the keys section of this, uh, of this uh, JSON object, um, I'm going to specify the file that I want to override. So I'm going to say uh, dot slash uh, index.js. Um, this is the file that would be loaded uh, if my module is going to be used um, on the server. Um, but instead, I want to load up uh, dot slash uh, client.js. So now I have, you know, that was basically the same as just uh, setting this string equal to the browser uh, property before. Um, so now I have my different entry point. Uh, and then let's say I have a custom shim for the HTTP uh, library in core node. Um, if I want to specify uh, something like that, I would just go uh, dot slash, you know, my HTTP dot JS. And then I would uh, be able to implement my own uh, browser shim for the HTTP library as well. So, um, 
those are kind of the two main things that you'll have to do to prepare your module for Browserify. Um, specify you know, an alternate entry point and any shims that you need. Um, the other thing that you might have to do is specify some source transformations. Uh, if you're, um, it'll basically al allow you to process uh, code um, in a stream and uh, output a modified version of that code that'll run in the browser. And there's a lot of uh, existing uh, transformers out there for Browserify. Uh, one of the uh, more popular one, uh, more popular ones is Coffeeify, uh, which will basically uh, process your CoffeeScript code, convert it to JavaScript, and then include it in your uh, Browserify module. So uh, the way that we specify that is with uh, the Browserify field of uh, package.json, and uh, inside this uh, inside this object uh, we have a property transforms. And that's going to be an array of strings, uh, which will point to uh, modules inside your uh, project. So um, let's, if I had some CoffeeScript uh, that I wanted to uh, process before my module, uh, or as my module gets uh, browserified, um, I just specify that I want to run it through uh, this uh, transformation. And uh, if you do have a transformation uh, like this one, uh, you also have to add it um, in your module's uh, dependencies uh, will have to be resolvable uh, by Browserify um, as a dependency. So you just add a dependency there for uh, Coffeeify. So uh, to prepare your module, uh, you're going to, again, just do those three things. Uh, specify a new entry point, shim any, uh, any core node libraries or uh, modules within your own application that won't work in the browser uh, uh, unmodified. And then you can also specify transformations for your code. So uh, those are um, probably the things that you will uh, need to look at doing uh, to make your module sort of compatible with Browserify. Now, uh, the reason why I think this is kind of interesting is sort of uh, specific to Twilio and, the, and what we do with uh, our module. So um, with uh, the Twilio SDK, there's a server-side component that has a REST API, uh, which we uh, provide sort of a high-level object wrapper for um, in the NPM module. Um, but we also have this client-side SDK, which lets you make uh, voice over IP phone calls, which uh, Marcy used to such uh, great effect in her, uh, in her presentation earlier. Um, so we have a situation where we have an API um, that all sort of hangs together and has client and server-side components. Um, so I actually kind of looked at an API that, uh, similar to like what Socket.io provides, uh, where it has sort of a uh, elegant way of uh, including both client and server-side functionality. Um, at least initially, it was in a single package. Now it's in uh, two different ones. Uh, but uh, this seemed to be a really good use case for Twilio's voice over IP. So uh, what we have to do today is, you know, your browser code has to uh, talk to your web application to generate a capability token, which basically empowers the browser to uh, make phone calls. Uh, and then your node application has to respond um, to an AJAX request. And then uh, your browser talks to Twilio to initiate the voice over IP call. Twilio talks to your application to get uh, you know, instructions for how to handle the call uh, before ultimately you can actually place that uh, voice over IP phone call between uh, your customer and the uh, person that you would like to, uh, your browser and the uh, person that you would like to talk to. So uh, this seemed to be a really great um, opportunity to uh, design a module uh, using, uh, using Browserify uh, that would provide two different uh, interfaces on both the client and the server. So um, I'd like to show you a little bit of, the, of how I would envision uh, this working um, in an application. So um, let's go ahead and open up a uh, simple demo. So uh, here we have um, a node application. Um, pay no attention to this. The, basically, this is uh, just a module that I created that creates sort of a pre-configured um, express for uh, web application. So uh, this is an express uh, web app that um, is set up with some uh, useful middleware for um, you know, automatically browserifying certain files and applying less and stuff like that. So, uh, but it's basically an express for uh, web app. And then we uh, require a special version of the Twilio module. Um, and then I can actually use the Twilio module to basically uh, mount some server-side uh, capabilities that will handle some of that token generation and that other uh, song and dance that we saw before. Um, so this is the, uh, the API that I want to expose um, on the server side. And then on the client side, um, I wanted to sort of drastically simplify uh, the code that would be necessary to actually create a voice over IP call uh, between two parties. So um, here uh, we just include uh, from a Twilio CDN a uh, JavaScript file which has sort of the core uh, basic uh, JS SDK. And then here we have a browser uh, file that we're loading up uh, from our web application. 
And uh, in that file, um, we have jQuery that we've installed uh, via NPM, so we can uh, you know, use that uh, like an NPM module. And also the uh, Twilio module, uh, again, using a customized uh, version of it um, on my local uh, file system. And then we just have a couple of uh, handlers here that will you know, uh, initialize the uh, outbound phone call with you know, Twilio.dial. Uh, it'll hang up um, when the user uh, wants me to. And then um, initially, um, because this uh, JavaScript is being uh, generated on the server, um, I'm able to just call uh, Twilio Connect. And I, already, and I don't necessarily have to make AJAX calls or do any, any stuff to uh, you know, fetch a capability token or set up my server side. Um, because my JavaScript is generated on my server, I know where it lives, um, and um, I can sort of automate that entire process. So um, what I'm going to do is fire this up. Um, actually, it looks like it's already running. And um, I do, uh, in order to do uh, voice over IP, I need for this web application to be on the public internet. Uh, does anybody here use a tool called ngrok? Ngrok, it's a port forwarder, a couple people. OK, so if you don't use ngrok, uh, and take nothing else away from this talk, uh, it's an amazing tool. It will change your life. Uh, definitely go install it. Uh, it basically uh, assigns a public-facing URL uh, to a, uh, a local port um, on your laptop. So if you have a local node server, a Rails server, or something like that, um, you want to quickly put it on the internet so that your uh, friends or clients can check it out. Um, ngrok is a great tool uh, to let you do that. So basically what I have uh, running is a simple application that will, uh, by default, initiate a conference call between uh, somebody and their browser. Um, sir, would you mind uh, being my guinea pig in the front row? I'm going to come uh, pick on you. Would you mind going to kw.ngrok.com? Sorry to pick on you like that, but I, would, I need at least one, one person to kw.ngrok.com, and just click on that button to say, uh, join a conference call. Um, and Twilio's, uh, Twilio's client-side SDK will use uh, the WebRTC APIs uh, built into the uh, Chrome browser to initiate a phone call. And we'll dial in. And now I'm holding, waiting for that second party. Uh, actually, just hit the uh, join the conference call button. Okay, now you can join. And uh, if you're in Chrome, oh, there we go. Hey, I hear you. And I hear you. I know. It's incredible. Magic of WebRTC. Yeah, I know. Our voices are connecting through the inner tube. So, um, so yeah, um, basically the, the reason I wanted to show that is um, it's, it's one example where you have a module and you know that you're going to have uh, server-side APIs and client-side APIs that are going to have to interact with one another. And, uh, if you, and you can uh, present sort of a unified interface uh, to both the client and the server um, if you write your, um, write your module um, in this way. Um, and in, the, uh, in this particular example of the Twilio module, I was able to share code uh, between the uh, client-side SDK that is being used in the browser um, and the uh, um, server-side SDK that I use, uh, that you would use to you know, contact the REST API um, or to uh, generate capability tokens on the server. So um, I definitely recommend that you check out uh, Browserify. It's a great, uh, if you're using Node, uh, it makes a ton of sense because uh, you're basically going to be using the same one package manager uh, one style of um, structuring your code, um, and you'll be able to realize a lot more of the benefits of having JavaScript on both the client and the server. So uh, some of the documentation for the Browserify specific stuff uh, that you see is up here. Don't worry about uh, copying it down. Um, this is actually all on uh, my uh, SlideShare account, which is uh, slideshare.net slash kwinnery. Um, and if you have any uh, questions, feel free to come track me down. Um, but again, yeah, I think uh, Browserify is a really cool tool and uh, definitely worth checking out if you're using that. So uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it.